Here's a question I get asked a lot. How much protein can your body absorb per meal? The easy answer is almost an unlimited amount. Your body is not limited with how much protein you're eating and how much it can absorb. I think a better question or maybe a better way to look at it would be how much protein do I have to eat per meal to maximize muscle building? That's a little bit more of a complicated answer. We do have some good research on this topic and I think it's also important to note that not all of the protein you eat in a given meal is necessarily gonna go towards muscle building. You need to be eating some minimum amount of protein to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. And if you're eating far below that, or if you're eating way in excess above that, you're probably not eating in an optimal amount. And so too little protein in some meals, too much protein in other meals might just not be as optimal. Doesn't mean you can't build muscle doing so, uh, that type of an eating schedule, but it's probably not as optimal or as efficient. Also, there's no way for your body really to store protein in the same way that your body can store fat as body fat or in the same way that your body can store carbs as glycogen. So it's really important that you're giving your body plenty of protein when it needs it in order to help you to build that muscle mass. There's a lot of different factors that can kind of influence how much protein you're gonna to need to eat, how much protein is necessary to stimulate muscle protein synthesis, how much is too much, things like the quality of the protein you're eating. When I say protein quality, I'm referring to the amino acid breakdown of the protein. Protein is made up of amino acids and there are certain essential amino acids that your body needs to eat. So foods that, are, that have more of the essential amino acids are typically higher in quality. This is one difference between uh, a vegetarian or vegan diet and someone who's eating an omnivorous diet or a diet that includes both animal and plant products. Typically animal-based products are going to be higher in protein quality. And so if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, that doesn't mean that you're somehow not able to build as much muscle, but you're going to have to think outside the box a little bit more to make sure you're structuring your meals to get all of those essential amino acids in, either by combining certain foods or by focusing on foods that are higher in certain uh, protein amino acids to get more of those essentials in. If you eat a lot more animal-based products, you don't have to necessarily worry about it as much. It's not as significant and it's not as important. One of the important amino acids, for example, is leucine. Typically foods higher in leucine content are going to help you to stimulate muscle protein synthesis more effectively. And again, if you look at some animal-based products, um, they're going to be typically higher in leucine content versus a lot of plant-based ones might not be as high and so it might require you to eat more and more protein just to get a, a certain amount of leucine in your diet, for example, to help with muscle protein synthesis. Some other factors that can influence too would be the composition of your meals. Are you having protein by itself, just having a whey protein shake after you train? Are you also having some carbohydrates? Are you also having some fats with that meal? Those things can also impact the rate of digestion and certain proteins and certain foods, like eggs for example, are a much slower digesting protein source. Same thing with a casein protein supplement. Whereas a whey protein supplement is typically a faster digesting protein source. Some other factors that aren't necessarily diet related, things like the type of exercise that you've done, your age, your experience with working out, those factors can also have an influence as to what your protein requirements are and impact muscle protein synthesis. I just want to lay all those things out there. That's not an exhaustive list by any means, but just to show and to illustrate that it, it is pretty complicated. There's a lot of variables here. And in some cases, we just don't have a definitive answer. It can't just be if you eat X amount of protein, that's, that's going to be sufficient and we know for sure you're going to build as much muscle. But fortunately, like I said, we do have some studies and some research on this, and we can probably come up with a, a decent range or a good amount of protein to shoot for, for example, in a given meal to try to optimize muscle building. So we're going to go through in some of, the, some of the detail now looking at one of these studies. There's a pretty helpful research review by Dr. Brad Schoenfeld and Alan Aragon on this topic. It was titled, How Much Protein Can the Body Use in a Single Meal for Muscle Building? Implications for Daily Protein Distribution. It emphasizes the importance of setting up nutritional goals. Uh, for example, figuring out how much protein you're trying to eat uh, on an individual basis. Not everyone wants to be a bodybuilder. Not everyone's primary goal or objective is to eat as much protein as possible, to build as much muscle as possible. In the case of someone who's overweight, trying to lose some fat would be a, probably a big priority. And building muscle might be more of a secondary thing. And in a situation like that, it might not be as important to think about how much protein do I have to have per meal. It might be more important to think about things like how many calories do I have to eat? Can I follow a schedule of eating where I can stick with it? You know, if you want to do some kind of intermittent fasting, maybe that could be a viable strategy. And that, while that might not be as optimal for muscle building, it certainly can help with weight loss. Whatever diet strategy, diet plan you want to follow, as long as you can stick to it. And so just to illustrate that there could be some other priorities you'd want to pay attention to rather than sacrificing everything just to try to space your protein throughout the day. So I think that's a, a good point, as well as it depends on what type of phase you're in in your training. There, uh, the research that we're going to talk about here is more focused on specifically muscle building. Protein requirements might differ and might even be a little bit higher in a calorie deficit scenario where you're trying to lose body fat. 
especially if you're someone who's got some more training experience. But suffice it to say, we're going to be talking about people who are generally just trying to build some muscle and not necessarily in a calorie deficit. And even if you're not following all of these guidelines that I'm going to talk about, doesn't necessarily mean you're not building any muscle mass. Again, this is trying to optimize muscle building and there might be some extra nuance to it or more steps you'd have to take if you really want to go down the, the path of trying to build as much muscle as possible. And so these things, while they might seem like minor details, they are pretty significant, especially if you're talking about someone who wants to step up on stage or really is focusing a lot of the time and effort on building as much muscle as possible. And so that's why sometimes you can get lost in the weeds, but I think it's important to take a step back, think what your goals are, what you're trying to do. And ultimately remember, you've got to be able to stick to whatever plan you're following. But in a nutshell, so the recommendations as they go through several different studies, talk about some of the, the nuances there, what was studied and some of the limitations. They recommend eating between 0.4 grams per kilo per meal and 0.55 grams per kilo per meal. So converting that to freedom units, they're talking about 0.18 grams per pound per meal and 0.25 grams per pound per meal. An easy way to think about this is take your total protein for the day. In the case of if it's 200 grams of protein, let's say, at the upper end, divide it by four. So that's 50 grams of protein in a meal over the course of four meals throughout the day. That seems to be more optimal to maximize muscle building. Could go lower and again, go with a 0.18 times by you know, 200 grams, and, and then that'll give you the amount you need per meal. Keep in mind, again, this is a range, and if you really want to be a little bit extra uh, careful with that or really want to make sure you're eating enough, you can eat a little bit more or eat more towards the upper end of the threshold. It's probably pretty low risk to do that. There's not really going to be too many negative consequences of eating more protein. Um, if you're just adding in extra calories to eat more protein, you still would want to make sure that you're not overdoing it, maybe causing yourself to go into too much of a surplus or something like that. Now, where does the total protein number come from? Well, fortunately enough, there was a meta-analysis that came out relatively recently that was looking at protein um, intakes in different studies and the impact on fat-free mass. So they were basically trying to rank and see, okay, this group of people or that group of people in a given study ate this much protein relative to their body weight. What was the influence there on their fat-free mass? How much uh, lean body mass they were able to build and, and, and so on. And so kind of determining based on that, well, is there a benefit to eating a lot more protein? Where is the minimum amount of protein you're going to want to eat? And so they also have come up with a range. But in, in, in essence, basically, they're saying on average around 1.6 grams per kilo a day in terms of your total protein intake. So that comes down, converting again to freedom units, about 0.73 grams per pound, or if you want to round, one gram per pound on the upper end. So if you weigh 200 pounds, 200 grams of protein, or about 73% of your body weight on the lower end. Now, I think a couple things important to keep in mind, just because they said 1.6 grams per kilo on average, um, we're talking about confidence intervals. And in statistics, not to dive too much into statistics, but that's a way to give a range. And they're talking about what is... Uh, what is a recommended amount of protein that's likely to fall within this range is gonna benefit most of the population. And so they're saying that probably around 1.6 grams per kilo up to about 2.2 grams per kilo. And the reason I'm emphasizing kind of running through this is I've heard time and time again, people disagree or argue or debate, and there is still some debate going over these numbers and things like that. Some people falling more on the lower end, some people on the upper end, but I've heard people disagree with that based on the study itself. If you look at the study and you just read the abstract, you can find the conclusion there that they say around 1.6 grams per kilo. But this is why it's a, a good example. Of, it's important to read through the study. It's important to look at how they did the analysis. It's important to really understand uh, the concept of confidence intervals if you're gonna try to draw conclusions from it. And so they're giving a range and they're just telling you in the conclusion the average. But again, you could still benefit from a little bit more than the average. And so if you're someone who's really particular and you really just wanna make sure you're paying attention to all the details, and not leaving any potential muscle gains on the table, could potentially be building more muscle, eating up to one gram of protein per pound. I'm gonna put some links down below, going into some more detail about confidence intervals in case you're curious about that sort of thing. I mean, imagine living in the year 2020 and not even knowing statistics or confidence intervals or nonlinear regression, or in this case, they did uh, breakpoint analysis, segmented regression. Come on, that's elementary school stuff. What are you even doing with your life, bro? Do you even stats? In any case, I'll give you a practical example here. Let's assume you weigh 180 pounds. The minimum end is 0.73 grams per pound. 
upper end, one gram per pound. So that's between 131 grams up to 180 grams of protein for a 180 pound person. And then you divide the total protein intake by four meals. And that's gonna get you about 33 grams a meal up to 45 grams a meal. Well, to summarize this video, there isn't really a limit to how much body, or how much your body can absorb in terms of protein intake. It's gonna absorb almost an unlimited amount. And I think, again, the more important question is how much protein do you have to eat per meal to optimize muscle building? There are several different factors that can influence muscle protein synthesis, your protein requirements. So while it can be really complicated and, and sure it can be overcomplicated for some people, I think it's important to take a step back, think about why you're doing this in the first place, what some of your big goals are. Is muscle building number one? Is muscle building in the top three? And uh, if you find yourself not being able to eat throughout the day because you prefer uh, less meals throughout the day or something like that, then just follow whatever you can stick to. You're not looking at the difference between building a lot of muscle and building a small amount of muscle here. It might make a marginal difference at best. But for someone who's very serious about bodybuilding and competing, this could be a pretty significant uh, concern because a few pounds of muscle on stage compared to the next guy can be the difference between winning and losing a competition. If you make a mistake or have a bad day or you miss a, miss a little here or there in a meal, don't sweat the small stuff. Again, it's really more important that you focus on the big picture. Most important thing though, eat your total amount of protein. That's number one. Hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please give it a like. Please subscribe. Comment down below. I'll have some links, like I said, down below you can check out. And I look forward to seeing everyone again in the next video.